So uh, we, we did this, uh, present, uh, this presentation to kind of talk about um, how we can connect MCUs to MPUs. This has been, um, well, real quick, I work in our uh, Sitar MPU um, a group. Andrew also works in our embedded processing. He's part of our open source technology team. But uh, let me get on to the presentation here. So connecting MCUs and MPUs has been done for a long time. Um, what I wanted to highlight here, this is kind of like we were talking earlier about the, uh, the CAN uh, presentation with the J1339. Those are for like defined uh, uh, implementations. This is what I'm going to talk about. It's more about user-defined things, about just connecting one or two things up that perhaps didn't make it into the uh, next application that's uh, in the MPU. And um, again, these are uh, things that have been around for a long time. And uh, in one thing we're seeing a lot is a lot of MCUs being attached to MPUs, and they're doing very simple things, not sophisticated things, uh, like, like the CAN thing was just presented earlier. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody knows what an MPU is, but it's uh, the Linux thing on the left, and the thing on the right is the, M is the MCU. And those are typically very, very cheap. Everybody likes to pay an MCU price for an MPU, but that, obviously, we can't do that. Uh, so some common applications that I've seen is um, one of the things I've been working with a little bit lately is uh, EV charging. And so for just a couple of peripherals we don't have, like in one of our MPUs, is a PWM and an ADC. They're kind of being run specifically on the MCU, and they're being run at a very um, very high rate. We can't, enter the, uh, can't be bothered on the MPU. Um, we've also seen like touchscreen controllers. Um, wireless protocols is another example of um, thing I think was talked about earlier that connect typically over UART. But uh, one of the things I'm going to talk about here in a second is when you don't have a UART and we have to maybe perhaps switch to a spy interface. And sometimes that causes um, some grief for, for developers. Um, low latency apps, we see a lot. Peripheral mismatch is the other thing I'm talking about. So like in one of our MPUs, we didn't have an ADC, and the only way to get that was to add in an MCU. And to do that, we had to uh, use a spy interface. And so typically, uh, when, you're, when you're connecting up two MCUs, well, an MCU to an MPU, you have um, just a couple of uh, different interfaces that you can use. For example, most people use UARTs. Uh, you could also have a SPI interface. Uh, we're putting in, we're suggesting maybe I2C, but also one of the things that I was thinking about would be, could we use a CAN interface? So a lot of times you're seeing CAN being used for other things than a normal, like say, CAN application. Seeing a lot of just basic data transfer instead of being more of a command and control or status update type thing. We're seeing like things like firmware uploads happening over CAN bus. And those are happening at very high uh, rates. The uh, thing that the CAN maintainer talked about, frame drop, we see that a lot because people are going really fast on a CAN bus. Um, but when you connect up the, the interfaces, is that uh, you have, to, like we already have these defined interfaces. Typically it's on the, on the, in the dev directory. We have I2C and the SPI and, and, and the UART. And CAN's in the network side of things, but we're wondering if maybe we could make it more into a UART. Um, and this is kind of where we, we're seeing sometimes an issue, is that on the MPU side, you can run out of interfaces pretty quick due to muxing. And so normally when you have a UART to UART type thing, that's fairly straightforward. But what if, say for example, you're out of UARTs on the MPU, and you have to maybe switch over to, uh, a lot of people switch over to SPI next, but could you switch over to CAN and still be able to, be able to interconnect the two devices? And um, I can't say this, I mean, usually on the MCU side, we have um, these SDKs are getting pretty sophisticated now in terms of being able to switch interfaces pretty quickly. But I'm speaking from the, uh, from the uh, MPU side where you want to be able to have maybe one application that you can just use and it's connected over UART, but now you're underneath, you're going to connect with SPI or, or, uh, or ITC or even uh, CAN. And that's kind of what we're trying to say is can we just, can we perhaps kind of have something that always looks like a UR even though you've got a different underlying, underlying uh, bus. And so like with UARTs, everybody's pretty much familiar with, you can just, uh, you can add an interface. That's a real quick way of testing it. And again, these are, these are standard applications that come in most file systems and you don't have to worry about uh, having to compile anything. And also the other last point is that with, uh, with a UART type application, it, it's a little bit more straightforward to some application developers. If they think they have to use SPI, then it kind of introduces some, um, 
some support issues in terms of people not understanding you know, spy applications or spy-based applications. And the other thing is, is that a lot of times when people see, like if they're using a spy bus, they expect a dedicated driver. And if you don't, if you don't have to have a, um, a dedicated driver, it allows people to develop a lot faster. And that was, I would say, one of the things we'd see a lot. Is that prohibits a lot of people from just connecting MCU up because they think they have to have a dedicated spy driver. And UART would be something that's, again, this is simplest, it's very straightforward, lots of examples on the web, and um, most people understand that. And as an example, this is like a hello world type um, user application that's based on a UART. And that you simply just gonna open and then read it and then do whatever you need to do and then uh, maybe go back to sleep. And again, everything from this application would look like it's just another uh, peripheral that's attached to the uh, to the device uh, over UART. So in this right here, is, these are some common, I guess, MCU solutions that you see a lot about how they're connected. Um, this is not all of them, but uh, for example, the one on the left is the standard, standard UART, where you have maybe say an ADC is connected to a UART on the MCU, and then that's connected to the UART on the, on the SOC. And then you have the standard UART driver, so the, going down to the bottom where you see the dev TTY is zero, that's how you, write it for your application. All three of these are versions of being able to just access a simple UART. The one in the middle is the one that we kind of like to highlight. Uh-oh. The one in the middle is the one that we want to highlight here is that um, a lot of times when you're having more sophisticated, you have an RP message type stack. And if you, there's also apparently, um, according to Andrew was showing us, that you can do an RP message TTY, which gets you back into a UART context rather than having to do a lot of the RP message type uh, applications. So again, that kind of simplifies your, your UART, uh, I mean, your application from a UART perspective. And then the one on the right is um, just another example of like a USB coming in over UART. But one of the things we're seeing is sometimes perhaps people don't like a USB because the device may not have USB. And if you're going from a USB to a UART, you're back into having to have like a uh, conversion chip on the, on the board, which is something we talk about here. And so the Couple things about it, maybe expanding like SPI for UARTs is that um, with the SPI you can have multiple chip selects, so you could actually connect multiple MCUs on the SPI, but also make it look like a UART. And then um, again, we're, this is again this is highlighting simple data. This is not going to be sophisticated MCU applications like you're, you have a, um, a MCU that's running for like a, a motor control type app. This is for more simple sensor like data. And we're not highlighting, we'd like to see if we could just have a UART interface. So this is the, the key slide I think we wanted to show you, is that the red box is kind of showing how can we take, whether we have a spy dev driver or some other thing, and have it come through this one box and, and, and run it through a pseudo TTY type application. And then that way you can still have your, your Linux application, still looks like, it looks like it's talking to a UART even though you've got this underlying different, uh, different connection mechanism. So the thing on the, on the right also is a similar thing in that um, I'd like to maybe see if we could add CAN in there. I know CAN's part of the network stack, but uh, could, we, could we add that in there? Hmm? Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's basically like tunneling into uh, a yeah, uh, more complex protocol. Um, so the, oh, one more thing I wanted to highlight about this one I kind of skipped over is that Right now, we can, you can already kind of do, oh. Just, just to <clears throat> be sure that I understand, uh, this means that you also, on the MCU side, need uh, to have a protocol to, to serialize the SPI transfers, right? Yes. Okay. So the, reason, uh, so the idea is to, to, to define a standard protocol, like, like RP message is already a standard protocol, uh, but a standard protocol for SPI and for CAN and for, uh, I square C uh, to to serialize them. Yeah. So right. the uh, I kind of talked about well, but to your point, like a lot of these MCU SDKs now come with complete driver libraries, and they already kind of have example of code on how they can access the. Uh, is that what you're talking about in terms of like a? Um, maybe I'm not following. You. So, in general, when 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 you write an uh, 
uh, code for an MCU with a um, SPI interface. You're going to define commands on the SPI, yes. and with with uh, the command has a exp has a well. You expect one SPI frame to be one command. Like you don't need uh, special links and so on. And you maybe piggyback or already responds on the uh, on the same SPI transfer, um, which does not map at all over to UART, right? <laughs> so it, basically, you will need to have a specific protocol on the MCU side as well that both sides agree on. Uh, to be able to have UART on top, and on, on top of that, probably a, a s application specific protocol still to um, to do the actual functionality. No, yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying on that. Is, yeah. is, and that was kind of what, what I'm not showing. You. One thing we did is that uh, you'd have this is going to be a higher level like user defined protocol. So you're just using this as an underlying bus. You'd still have to, like what you're saying is you have to your user would have to define the commands you're trying to push across that. that yes, I, I don't know. J just uh, like. With UART, you send a stream of bytes and you receive a stream of bytes. With I2C and SPI, you can just do the same. But I2C, you have to be careful because you, you see, there's a slave address. Excuse me? Yeah, sure, but yeah. It, it's just a stream of bytes that you're sending and receiving, like with the UART. And you have to, at a higher level, you have to define some protocol, which is we are probably commands separated by a new line or something like that. Yes, right. But when you do i squared transfer, you need to, sp to chunk the, the into transaction. Is it 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits? Um, I mean, SPI is the same, right? So you still need to define a way. And I'm, so just taking a step back, uh, isn't that taking the, the problem from the wrong angle? Uh, what is your MCU providing as feature? Because normally the kernel exposes to user space some, some device that provides some actual feature. Is it an ADC? Is it a timer? Is it a watchdog? Is it, what is the feature that it provides? Because here you're only abstracting, abstracting the communication channel, but normally the, 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 the management of the, the feature is on the kernel side and we expose to user space applications some more high level feature like a network interface, an audio interface, something like that. So I think the real question is, what is your MCU doing? And shouldn't that, that handling be done on the kernel side? We have some use cases where we have a remote MCU that has ADCs, and we have an IIO driver in the kernel that communicates with the remote MCU, and it's exposed as a regular IIO device from the, the standpoint of the use space application. So we're not abstracting the communication channel, but just making a normal uh, driver fitting in the right subsystem. So I think this is handling the problem from a slightly wrong angle from my perspective. I think both problems exist, depending on the use case, you have one or the other. Yes. Sure. So have a simple shell that you're talking to. Exactly. Yeah, re read ADC, write, ADC, write DAC, things like that. Uh, I don't see how you can do it generically. So if you are using SPI, the other device needs to pull you somehow, so you actually send something to it to receive something on the right. other side, and you need a lens, how, how many cycles do you give it so it returns to you? So you need a protocol. You, you just can say, yeah, we just map you out. It's mm -hmm. more complex than that. And I agree, we also have this use case in a lot of projects. These industrial people love their microcontrollers, mm -hmm. and we normally want it always in the kernel because they have watchdogs, they have uh, like Ken, we have like a customer who does CAN over SPI because yeah, I have an STM32, of course it has mm -hmm. to CAN, I want to use that. And yeah, we RP message over SPI and over UART in the kernel, that would be great. Okay. I mean. I'll talk to you more about that one. All right, so three minutes. Um, so, well, the only thing I want to highlight next would be is whether we do this at the user level or at the uh, kernel level. And um, because with the kind of what you're talking about is it, is it at some point, you know, latency is going to come into the picture in terms of how fast we can respond. And, uh, and so therefore that would have to be taken in the control, I mean, into account. And then also there's the a flow control aspect. Is it, is it how much data is too fast? How do we control it? So the, again, this was more thinking about this would be from a very simple data perspective. Um, ideally, it wouldn't be too time sensitive. Um, but again, these things are also, you know, these are the points you're are all good ones. And, uh, and we just thought maybe 
UART abstraction might be something that uh, might be a very simple interface that you could use across different interfaces. And, um, but we can always discuss whether this would be a Any more questions? Serial sounds simple, but in practice, it's not always that simple. So are you aware of any small command line tools that you can use to talk to microcontroller in such a way? For example, I have something similar in my board form. I have a microcontroller with USB serial, and I talk to it with a simple shell, shell commands like uh, GPIO, GPIO 1 on or things like that. And what I need and what I still haven't finished is basically some simple command line tool where I could, uh, where, that would just pass the parameters as one line to the serial and then read back until it gets the prompt back. I, I, we don't have that, but because the, the application we were doing was basically it's just dumping data from the from the ADC to the to the spot. Um, oh, maybe you have one. Yeah, have you heard of Zephyr? Because we have a really <laughs> we have a really great uh, shell, so there are shell applications for virtually everything, like GPIO, and it does have a prompt, which is really good. So, I'm in the wrong place today. No, it, it it it's not the Zephyr side, the the microcontroller side. It's on the Linux side. <laughs>